whatever. Thank you very much for coming. Marvel Dog. I see your picture everywhere. You're not thinking of running for office. No, no, don't worry. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, could I please uh, ask you if you would give uh, our honored guests a little room here on your left so that we can begin our ceremony. Good afternoon. I'm John Egan, Commissioner of General Services, and I have the pleasure and the honor of acting as your Master of Ceremonies today. Joining with Governor Cuomo, we have our legislative leaders, the Speaker Pro Tem of the New York State Senate, Warren Anderson, Speaker of the House of our Assembly, Stanley Fink, and I notice uh, Clarence Rapelier is here. We also have the chairperson of our Temporary State Commission on the Restoration of the Capitol, Matthew Bender, the chairman of the Preservation League, Dr. Garvin, and Diana Waite, the executive director. We also have, I notice, Mayor Whalen, Mayor of the capital city of Albany. And later in the program, we'll be hearing from Reverend Robert Dixon, who is here to give us our benediction. Before we start, however, I would be remiss if I did not mention that the people of New York State have a tremendous history for caring about each other. They also have a tremendous history of caring for their architecture and their buildings. Today, we bring those histories together and how appropriate it is that our invocation today will be the first official act of the recently ordained, just yesterday, Rabbi Amy Eilberg. Rabbi? O oh Lord, God of all peoples, we ask your blessing for this ceremony, for the leaders of the state of New York, and for the people whom they serve. Help us to see the rededication of this beautiful chamber as an opportunity for rededication in our lives and in our work. Let us see this room as a symbol of the harmony of the old and the new, just as the author of the Book of Lamentations called on you with the words, renew our days as of old. Keep us ever mindful of how much we have to learn from those who preceded us, how much tradition can teach us about the tasks of today. 
Help us to use the past for inspiration at the same time that we apply the best of our energies to the challenges of the present. Support us in our efforts to eradicate poverty and bigotry and remind us always that we work as your partners when we labor to ameliorate human misery and injustice in all of its forms. May this government never fail in its endeavor to do your work on earth. May we never succumb to despair or exhaustion, never lag in our efforts to make this world a better place. For we are not alone in our efforts. We have much to draw on in the heritage of our forebears and in the vision of our youth. Most of all, we feel confident of your blessing as we ask you, return us, O Lord, to you, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. A number of people have joined us since we started. Of course, the first lady of our great state of New York, Matilda Cuomo. And I noticed that the first chairperson of the temporary commission on the restoration of the Capitol, Orrin Lehman, has joined us. At the present time, I'd like to introduce our current chairperson, Matthew Bender. Thank you, John, Governor, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem, thank you for being here. I would like to introduce the members and recognize the members of the Temporary State Commission on the Restoration of the Capitol. They are, in alphabetical order, Patrick Balguero, David Eric Chase, Stephen Einhorn, Commissioner Oren Lehman, Commissioner John Egan, Barnabas McHenry, Norman Rice, Frank Sanchez, Stuart Stein, and Lou Swire. There would not be a Capitol Commission if it were not for the Assembly and Senate of the State of New York. We thank you for your support and your leadership in creating us to be a custodian and a professional caretaker for this building. This building, as you know, is a national historic landmark, and it belongs not only to the people of the state of New York, but of course to all of you who work so well in it on our behalf. We as a commission working with OGS and with the legislative and executive branches have prepared a long-range plan for the use of this building. It is a unified approach that takes into consideration not only the historic spaces such as this, and the important spaces such as the Senate Chamber and the Assembly Chamber, but also the places where our people work, the offices, and, and where our state citizens visit. We as a commission working with you and OGS have a plan in place to restore and create better working spaces. I would like to say that preservation is a practical living thing today and while this is but one facet of it, you have other wonderful working spaces that have been rehabilitated in this building that are also an example of the master plan for the New York State Capitol. So I want to thank all of you for coming and for participating in the exciting rededication of this room where so much has happened. Thank you very much. Now it is my pleasure to introduce for the Preservation League of New York, the chairman, Mr. Anthony N. B. Garvin, who's fam who has strong family ties to Albany, New York, and the executive director, Diana White. Thank you, Matthew. The Preservation League of New York State is very honored to be able to be here today and to share in this occasion with Governor Cuomo the members of the legislature, the Temporary State Commission on the Capitol, the Office of General Services, and the architects and artisans who work so hard to make this possible. The Preservation League's award is given in recognition and celebration of the excellence of the architecture of this room. And it's given especially to celebrate the stewardship in its preservation. Historic preservation entails a great deal of understanding of the past but it also involves much looking to the future. The New York State Capitol is one of the great buildings in this country, and the Executive Chamber is one of the important interior spaces by Henry Hobson Richardson. We congratulate you on its restoration. It is truly a gift of the past for the future of the people of New York State. Governor Cuomo. Governor. It gives me great pleasure to, because great buildings deserve 
sturdy defenders. And it gives me a special pleasure to give you this award on behalf of the Preservation League of New York State. As I am told, you, as well as the Temporary State Commission, uh, the Office of General Services and the Architect, have worked tirelessly to bring its execution to this successful conclusion. May I say off the record that should you ever have a gap in your political career, you can be assured that like Christopher Wren of a, of a position at Chief of the Works. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Governor, I, I'm sure you haven't got another hand, uh, even though you have remarkable abilities in this, but this is a time for gifts. And I should like to thank you also for your proclamation of May the 10th, 1985, declaring 1986 as Architectural Heritage Year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you don't mind if I don't put it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Craig Shoemaker in the audience. Mr. Shoemaker is the president of the Kettinger Company, and the desk that I'm standing behind was made especially for this occasion and for use in the Capitol by a fine New York State manufacturer in Buffalo, New York. The president is Mr. Shoemaker, and if he's not here, it's my fault because I suspect he couldn't find a parking spot. <laughs> let us come back to Mr. Shoemaker, and let us go to someone who has participated in this project from its inception and so many other projects in this building and in this area. Mr. John Misick, our architect of record. Next year. Governor and Mrs. Cuomo, it's now just 104 years this September that Governor Alonzo Parks became the first of 25 governors to occupy this office. <clears throat> it had been completed in 81, the same year as the Senate was completed by the same architect, Henry Hobson Richardson, who did so much around the Capitol to endow it with what splendor it has. But over the years, that splendor had in many ways been diminished. He had also designed the Court of Appeals Chamber, which was the same room on the third floor directly above us, almost its twin, except it was in Golden Oak. And uh, the justices liked it so much that when the court was relocated over to Eagle Street, they took their room with them. But here we had very little that did actually survive. Uh, the carpet had been changed, and we put it back as it was originally. And if the press persists in um, giving this room uh, chromatic designation, then I'm afraid they're now going to have to refer to it as the seafoam green room. <laughs> the uh, fireplace hearth was taken up and restored to its original tile. Uh, the light fixtures that Richardson put in here but didn't survive more than three governor's administrations were uh, put back as they had been in 1881, though without gas, uh, electric this time. And all the paneling uh, was cleaned as were the wall surfaces. Early press accounts described the wall covering, and uh, during the work we found some few scraps of it. Uh, beneath the paneling down at the baseboard, and so we were able to replicate it uh, very closely to what it had been. And even this desk here, uh, I believe each of the 25 governors has set at it. Certainly there's a wonderful uh, uh, description of Grover Cleveland confronting Theodore Roosevelt in uh, 1884, uh, the placid, stolid Cleveland uh, banging the desk to the opposition uh, leader, uh, T.R who was as mercurial and excitable and passionate as, as Cleveland was uh, stolid and conscientious. Through it all, Governor, we took the room as you followed it, I think nearly day by day, pretty much apart. And all that time, we were looking uh, for a particular bug that uh, tradition has infest this room. And though everything was taken apart, uh, nowhere uh, did we find one, though it is no doubt that it had bitten at least a third of the people who occupied this room, and it remains for you to tell us in time whether the presidential bug uh, still inhabits this room. Finally, I just want to say uh, my first conversation with Governor Cuomo occurred back uh, when he was Lieutenant Governor. 
and we had prepared the plans for the restoration of the Lieutenant Governor's office as part of the Senate restoration, and it was thought that uh, I should go in one day and tell Lieutenant Governor Cuomo what it is we intended to do with his office, and so I went in and made the presentation of all our ideas, and partway through it occurred to me that uh, perhaps I was a little nervy that the man himself may have some ideas and uh, have his own taste, how he'd like his own office, and so I deferred. I said, perhaps that doesn't fit what you think the office should be. He said, now wait a minute. Uh, this room doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people who built it, and it belongs to all the generations that are to come after us. And our job simply is to put it in good shape so that future generations will know what previous ones have actually done. Well, needless to say, I was rather dumbfounded because that's the little sermonette that I often give uh, to prospective clients. And I came away thinking he was either a very quick study and had figured my number out right on the spot, or he was truly an inspired, uh, sensitive individual. And I think today when you see this room, the Lieutenant Governor's office hasn't yet been done, but it's not a coincidence that Mario Cuomo was governor when this room gets restored. Thank you. Thank you. The dreams of architects and engineers never become reality unless they're translated. And today, we have a number of artisans here who translated those dreams and those plans into reality. And I'd like to ask Mr. Albert Rivetti, our capital architect, to come forward and introduce the men and women who made this plan come into being. Al? Good afternoon, Governor, Ms. Como. This was a very joyous uh, affair for me. With, in spite of all the problems we had along the way, uh, we have made uh, this room look like it did when Governor Cornell came in in 1881. Before I introduce the people, the artisans and people who, some of the people who worked on the room, I'd like to just say to you that there are many, many people who have helped do the work in this room. I've asked uh, a few of them to come and represent all of them. There were over 100 people who were involved in making this room into what it is today. Some of the people who are working in the room from time to time uh, had the governor come in and uh, check on what they were doing. This made for a very positive uh, feeling of all the people who were in the room. And every time I'd come in after the governor had been here, they would tell me that the governor was in and spoke to them, and they were really very excited about it. They all became part of the room, which which was very nice. Uh, as an architect, I always feel that I'm part of the projects I work on. And to have the people who are doing the work in the room feel that way was very encouraging to me. And I'm very proud of all the people who worked in the room. I'd like to start uh, calling the people who worked on the room, ask them to come up here and be recognized and we'll make a presentation to the governor. The wall surfacing was done by Jean Mondell, a sculptor, from Warrensburg, New York. The wood restoration work was done by Don Dales, High Falls, New York. The marble restoration was done, Carol Gilbert worked on that. We have window restoration was done by Anastasios Hatsios. Well, that was a tough one. And I called him Ernie all the time he was working here, and you can know why. Chandeliers and sconces were done by the Dan Ballinger. Now, I don't know whether Dan is here. I didn't see him, but he probably couldn't make it today. Dan, are you here? OGS tile setters put the heart tile together and uh, did an excellent job, Frank Montana. The cast iron grills, return air grills that are on the east wall were done by Donald Quick, and I don't know whether Donald's here or not, from Milford, Pennsylvania. 
These are just some of the people to give you a, a feel for the type of people who worked in the room. And I'm very, very happy to say that it was a joy for me to work with them. And Governor, your coming in made, made their day. Thank you. Governor, on behalf of the artisans, here's a small remembrance. Oh, thank you. Key to the room. I understand that Mr. Shoemaker has just arrived. Craig Shoemaker, president of the Kittinger Company. Mr. Shoemaker? It appears that the desk is in good working order. The Kittinger Company is very pleased to participate in the ceremony marking the restoration of the executive chamber. We've been manufacturing the finest in furniture reproductions and adaptations in Buffalo for 118 years, and are honored to have our stand-up desk on display here. Stand-up desk was an outgrowth of a lap desk commonly used over two centuries ago, and it's believed that Thomas Jefferson used a similar piece while writing the Declaration of Independence. Our interpretation of the stand-up desk is made from the best quality mahogany and mahogany veneers and features solid brass hardware and inlaid leather. It represents a piece of exceptional quality. We expect it to last at least through the next 104 years here in the executive chamber. And we're delighted to be able to give it to the governor and to the people of New York State. There are so many other people that participated in this project, and let me simply mention them by organization. There are electrical engineers who were responsible for the design and the implementation of all of the circuitry and the fixtures, our heating and ventilating engineers who are hopefully making this a pleasanter environment than it was, and a few inspectors. And on this job, we needed only a few, because as Al Brevetti mentioned, uh, the work workers used to uh, see the fellow who had an office next door quite often. And he came in and he looked over the work. And let me simply say to you, he knows quality. Ladies and gentlemen, a quality guy, Governor Mario M. Cuomo. Thank you uh, all very much for coming. Just a, a couple of quick little episodes, as long as you put such an emphasis on my uh, being here regularly, which indeed I was, I could hardly avoid it. I work on the other side of the door. And, and just the clamor from time to time, you know, would draw me in. But the, the truth is, the truth is, I did have a, a great interest in it, uh, to be candid with you. I, I think when first I came into public service, I didn't have this kind of interest in things antique and history. Uh, but being Secretary of State and then, more significantly, Lieutenant Governor, the truth is, if you stay four years in that Senate chamber in the Lieutenant Governor's office, it's very difficult not to develop uh, not a respect, but a reverence for the magnificent antiquity we have surrounding us. Of course, I had little else to do as lieutenant governor <laughs> but to enjoy the beauty of the chamber. Some of them were occupied in different ways. And, and, and all kinds of wonderful things have happened as you see the evolution of this room, a kind of reverse evolution going back to its pristine uh, condition. It's not there entirely, John, I, I guess. Huh? The drapes, uh, we need to do something with the drapes and the lunettes. The lunettes are going to be staying. It's not going to take as long as you said, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but so we ha we're not there all together. Some wonderful things happened on the way. Where's Brevetti? Where's Brevetti? I'll never forget the day I came in here and said to Brevetti about the furniture. Is this really the original? Yes, it is. These steps, remember the steps that you carry used to jump up on the desk? Who put those in originally? It was Dewey because he was short. It was a wonderful story. And then I said, do you have any other furniture of the original? And Brevetti almost casually said, well, we have a couple of pieces. One is in Crotty's office. I couldn't believe it. And the other one is the police desk. I said, what do you mean the police? Well, where the state policeman sits outside. I said, you mean that place where the guy puts out his cigarettes on the top of the desk? That's an original? There it is. If you just move away for a bit, that secretary's desk there is the desk that the police were using. OK? Uh, Crotty's desk I haven't found yet, but somewhere in the council's <laughs> office, there's a priceless original, probably. Uh, so the room has been uh, painstakingly, and uh, I think it's fair to say uh, lovingly, restored for a number of reasons. First, of course, because it's valuable in itself. Obviously, a thing of beauty, one of the most master masterful works of H.H. Richardson, the architect of 
much of this Capitol and of another masterpiece that you can see from the east windows, and that's the Albany City Hall. There's no question that Richardson did some of his best work in Albany and left us some architectural treasures that are unmatched anywhere. But as important as this room's architectural value is, there was another reason for restoring it, for undoing the misuse and the neglect and just the ordinary wear and tear that a century of use had brought to the room. It's a more subtle reason. It's not tangible like mahogany and marble and brass, but it's real nonetheless. It's the spirit of faith and hope that for more than a century has been kept alive in this room by government that has proven, I think, that it could meet the needs of its people without imposing itself unduly, uh, that it could care for the neglected without abusing the fit, that it could have both compassion and common sense, both a head and a heart, at the same time. It's a very proud tradition that's been kept alive by New Yorkers of different religious faiths and different political parties from upstate and downstate, from Buffalo and Oyster Bay, from Troy and Elmira, from the Lower East Side, from Hyde Park and Harriman, from Pocantico Hills and from Park Slope. And here for more than 100 years, in a countless variety of ways, 26 governors carried on the vital strivings of our democracy. And often we've taken that work, like this room, for granted. We shouldn't, because of what was done here by people like Teddy Roosevelt and FDR and Al Smith and Tom Dewey. We're still a people free to govern ourselves, free to seek solutions to the common problems we face, still a people making progress, combining opportunity and mutuality. Because of the work that went on here and in the Senate and in the Assembly and throughout our government, our forests were preserved. Parklands were set aside. A great public university system was created. A whole range of magnificent social legislation was enacted. Roads and bridges have been built. The basis of our greatness has been made secure and passed on for us to build on. And here, too, as in the legislative chambers, history was made. In this room, both Democrats and Republicans lived out the faith that this country was founded on, the faith that ordinary men and women, like you and I, could join together as a government to improve the conditions of people's lives. Now, there are other rooms and other capitals that are more sumptuous than this one, the ceilings even higher, the rugs even plusher, the trappings even grander. But there is no room anywhere richer in its traditions, in its history, and in its faith. Today, continuing our New York Celebrates New York program, we de rededicate this room in that spirit as an embodiment of the greatness that is our legacy, as a reminder of what was achieved and what still remains to be done. This work took, as you've heard, many, many hands and much love. It's the first project carried out under the master plan developed by the Temporary State Commission on the Restoration of the Capitol, and it sets a standard of excellence for all subsequent projects. There are many individuals who deserve thanks today. You've heard some of the names. We've tried to thank the craftsmen and the artisans who worked on the room in a special way with an interpretive exhibit on display outside in the east entrance lobby, and I hope you'll take the time to view that. We're grateful to Commissioner John Egan and OGS, to Matthew Bender, Chairman of the Temporary State Commission on the Restoration of the Capitol, and to all the members of the Commission, to the Capitol architect, Al Brevetti, to our consultant, John Misick, to Rabbi Eilberg and Reverend Dixon, who will complete the program with a benediction for invoking God's blessing on this work. This room and this building belong to the people of New York. They built it and restored it. They are its soul. It is my great honor to open this executive chamber to them. Thank you very much. The spirit of cooperation that prevails over these restoration efforts in the state capitol is due in no small measure to our next two speakers. The first, the majority leader of the New York State Senator, Senate, Warren M. Anderson. Thank you, John, uh, Governor, and Mrs. Cuomo. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the uh, New York State Senate, I'm delighted to extend my greetings on this occasion which celebrates the restoration and the rededication of this beautiful executive chamber. It was just uh, six short years ago that uh, I had the distinct honor as Majority Leader of the Senate to 
participate in our dedicatory proceedings marking the celebration of the restoration of the New York State Senate Chamber. And our Senate President at that special event uh, was the current Governor, Mary M. Cuomo, who was officially presented uh, with the designation of our state capital as a national historic landmark at that time by the United States Department of the Interior. And it was kind of the governor to uh, make reference to that today, and I appreciate that it was the uh, geography and, and not the inhabitants of the room that uh, uh, whetted his appetite and his interest in antiques. Um, at the time, I expressed the, the hope that the uh, Senate chamber would, um, which was so beautifully restored, as all of us know, by John Misick, who is here today and to whom I pay chief uh, credit for giving uh, Senator Orenstein and me the courage to, uh, to proceed in that, in that endeavor. And I'll never forget the, the little swatch of carpeting that he brought in one day. And I told the then Senate chamber, or Senate uh, uh, secretary, as I looked at it, that it was either the best, going to be the best looking carpet or the worst looking carpet in the history of the state of New York. It turned out to be the best. Anyway, um, uh, we're underway thanks to uh, that start and to, the, and to the great efforts. And I'd like to personally acknowledge the work, John, that you as Commissioner of the Office of General Services have, have provided as a caretaker of this, this fine building and the role that you have uh, given in, in restoring and rehabilitating uh, this room and other portions of the, of the Capitol where so many of us uh, work. We're fortunate, I believe, uh, to have, have with us and working for us, they are not all here, are the private citizens who have an interest in government and have an interest in restoring and preserving our, our heritage, be it architectural or otherwise, and I'm referring to the Capital Restoration Commission, which is guided by my good friend Matt Bender, whom I'm proud to say was uh, my appointee to the commission, uh, and who has served as chairman of our Senate Advisory Restoration Committee in 1979. And I couldn't uh, uh, speak on that subject without also mentioning another good friend of, of New York and uh, of mine, Barney McHenry. Uh, the Senate Chamber and the Executive Chamber represent uh, two of uh, the most outstanding examples of Henry Hobson Richardson's architectural genius in the Capitol. What has been accomplished in these rooms serve, uh, or at least should, serve as an inspiration and an encouragement to leave this Capitol a better place uh, than we found it and to provide appropriate surroundings in which to work faithfully and intelligently in behalf of the people of the state. I think if uh, Mr. Richardson were here today, I think he would approve of what we are doing, uh, but this only represents the foundation of what should be done in the future. In closing, I would hope that the governor and my good friends and colleagues, Speaker Fink, Senator Arnstein, Assemblyman Rappelier, each of the one, incidentally, would just as soon have a replica of that key, uh, governor. Uh, anyway, would approve and would help uh, uh, continue the good work that is underway. Uh, that's about all I have to say. I think that uh, uh, everyone is proud of, of this capital. The, the mall is, uh, is, 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 is very useful, and we, we wonder how we ever got along without it. But I think, really, uh, history will show that uh, this is where it all began, and, and uh, we must share our enthusiasm and our and our dedication to that by continuing to make this, uh, this part of, uh, of Albany the, the beautiful place it is, and that's what makes dedicatory days like today worthwhile. Thank you. The final speaker is someone who also has a great deal of care for this building, the people of New York State, and I'm sure is going to continue the spirit of cooperation that prevails over this restoration effort. Assemblyman Stanley Fink. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Commissioner Regan, uh, Governor and Mrs. Cuomo, distinguished chairpersons, uh, my colleagues, Mayor Whalen, I saw him standing someplace, Mayor Hawaii today. 
You've heard about the uh, refurbishing and the rededication of the uh, Red Room and the Senate chamber today. And uh, I turned to my two erstwhile colleagues, the Governor Warren Anderson, and asked them, do either of you know who did the assembly original work? One said Montgomery Ward, the other said Sears and Roper. <laughs> can't find a straight man any place around here. <laughs> Actually, we were, gonna, we were trying to restore the assembly to its original state, uh, but when it came to the carpeting, we, we couldn't replicate the bloodstains. <laughs> so we, de we decided to hold off on that a while. Uh, Governor, I, I will confess one thing. It is a beautiful room. I, I am a little disappointed. I, I kind of thought that the, the corners would be rounded off a little bit. It wouldn't be a little more oval looking. <laughs> Aside from that, it's magnificent. The, uh, the program has me bringing the greetings, and I bring you the greetings, and it's my honor and pleasure to do so uh, to this distinguished gathering. Uh, the congratulations of the Assembly at, at the completion and celebration of uh, this portion of the restoration of the Capitol building. Uh, I think uh, the completion of this phase is part of our long-term effort to restore this magnificent Capitol building, and uh, I don't think there's any question that it significantly enriches the treasure of the state of New York. I think, however, that in this, this undertaking in, in restoring this room and the Senate and other parts of our building to the original state, but particularly this room, I think we pay tribute uh, to the people of our state who, in their wisdom, uh, have elected the great leaders, past and present, uh, who have occupied uh, this office. And I think that's what this room has a great deal uh, to do with and, and what it's all about. I think most of us feel that the, the very presence of the great men uh, who the governor referred to who have uh, occupied this office uh, is symbolically restored uh, to this room uh, which they occupied uh, so ably serving uh, our state and their people. And I think uh, their presence and the restoration of this room is a vivid reminder to those of us who continue to work in this building, particularly the governor who continues to work in these quarters uh, of our challenge to live up to their greatness and that of the New Yorkers uh, who all of us so proudly present. And so while I am pleased uh, to partake in a ceremony uh, which restores uh, uh, this room to its original splendor and grandeur, and the people of the state of New York are entitled to have it this way, I don't delude myself for a moment. I think this restoration is a, sim a symbolism and a symbolic uh, to the great people who have occupied this room, who occupy this room now, and will continue to occupy this room. And I think that is symbolically is what all of us in this building are so, so very much proud of. And I'm very happy to be invited here today by you, Commissioner, to partake and bring the greetings and best wishes of the members of my house to this restoration. Thank you very much. How appropriate it is that we close with a message similar to our invocation in which we're reminded of the past, and more importantly, the future, and that individually, we're rather small, but collectively, we're rather large. A large man in Albany and the state, Reverend Robert Dixon of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Reverend Dixon. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege of being present at the restoration program of this beautiful and historic room. We pray that history may not stop until all of the people of this great state are looked upon as your children. Help us to appreciate quality not only of things, but of life. Bless our governor, his administration, the legislators, and all of those who seek to serve the citizens of this community and state. Dismiss us from this place, but not from thy presence. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Thank you all for joining with us. I presume you're all going in and uh, see the display and enjoy the reception.